Trap Red making another Trap Red YouTube video. Now I'm going to follow up on this peppermint harvest and show you what I've done. I cut the field of peppermint down here and as you can see already the profuse amount of new growth coming up off the cuttings bases. Not off the not off the stems that I cut, off the bases. You see how prolific this root system is? Watch out, Teddy, get down off me. See the root? This is a peppermint root. It's actually pushed itself up above the ground. Knock it off. And been shooting out these new shoots everywhere. It's just snaking itself through, so it's it's already been harvested, but it's sending out its new growth. And here's some that I have not harvested yet because I was waiting for it to flower. As you can see, it's all flowering. So, there's another field of flowering. And I have a little bit of spearmint. Not much right in here. This is spearmint that's down in here. This is peppermint that's peppermint so all that needs to be harvested and then go back across the yard Just another look at that flesh and beam or oh, our fur markets in dire straits because there's the flesh and beam good look at it hopefully uh the fur market collapsed uh, in Canada and uh, globally due to this uh, economic war. Here's uh, the production of carrot oil. You can see the layer of oil just formed. We got a nice amount of oil out of this already. This is a uh, ground fresh carrot. It's in a solar reflecting oven. Here's the box traps that are still in process. Tomatoes are coming along. They're being grown in pots to conserve water and space. Uh, they're fruit and fruiting quite, quite nicely. And uh, they like it here in the partial shade. So it's pretty good. Anyways, I want to show you this peppermint oil that I've refined and reduced using an alcohol technique. <clears throat> this lower part right here is comprised of alcohol. And peppermint. The peppermint was mixed with the alcohol and then it was separated. And what you see up here is a level and a level of pure peppermint oils very very nice <clears throat> here's the process i use this is peppermint leaf and water then that's combined with the oil and it's separated you can see all this right up here that's peppermint oils it's being separated right now from the actual raw material this is carrot it hasn't yet reduced <clears throat> I segregated it this is a little thicker the sun's got to work on it shut up jeez be that vicious and violent you know every day the same stuff Anyways, sorry for that intrusion by the neighbor's dogs. Um, what I was trying to explain is, anyways, here's the peppermint oil, the pure peppermint oil. The You need quite a bit of material to get that much peppermint. I don't know how much that was. At least, probably, at least, I'm thinking four ounces of dried material to get this amount of oil, maybe more maybe half a pound using the oil technique. <clears throat> Here's another glimpse. It's 
some of the wires traps I built. <coughs> Anybody hasn't seen them, Bigfoot traps. Those uh, muskrat colony traps are, uh, those are nestable. I built a set of five nestable traps and then there's a floater in back of it that has a uh, multi-catch chamber. This here is a, a small tunnel trap swim through set up so that the muskrat swims through and triggers the swim through mechanism and uh, thereby is captured. All right, this is trap red. I'll make this a short one. Uh, I don't think the fur market is going to recover anytime soon because the major players are in dire straits. Greece is the major buyer of gray fox, so the gray fox market's collapsed, which leaves the western trappers completely without a market right at the moment. Not to say one won't develop. And Russia also. So, a lot of the longer hair of furs, and in particular the fur market in general, especially the raccoons and the gray fox, have been greatly ill-affected by the uh, Russian and Greek financial fiscal collapse, along with Martin and Mink and Beaver. Just a general host of general fur sales have been ill-affected by Russia's collapse, but Greece was a major player now that they've collapsed, uh, the fur market's collapsed, and the, Ch it took, the Chinese went have gone with them. So it's a big thing, and we need to re-educate the people that fur is not bad. It's a renewable natural resource, and as such, it's green technology. Um, is it cruelty to animals? Well, nature's cruel. They've estimated that the activities of hunting and trapping on, in general only account for something on the order of 1 or 2% of the uh, overall mortality rate <clears throat> that's been analyzed through mathematical models and such. Although that sounds insignificant, when you're dealing in millions, it becomes a big number, hundreds of thousands, so on and so forth. So, but they know that. Anyways, they've got laws in place to protect everything. But, and they control everything in terms of the economy, the import-export tagging of uh, listed species and CDs agreements and all sorts of stuff. It's all wrapped up into one big ball of fur. Cat hair. <laughs> all right, this is Trap Red, over and out. Menifee's, California.